It's biology with Mr. B. Biology with Mr. B. That's me. I've not, I've not had to do that where it's sort of lagged before, so I've had to wait for a uh, wait for my thing to actually continue. Either way, um, apologies for this morning. Hopefully, this YouTube video will will solve it, and it will be our lovely lesson on spec point C. The genetic control of the development of anatomical development in different organisms. So the genetic control of your anatomical development in you and obviously in different organisms. My key words are hox and homeobox. We are going to describe the role of these homeobox genes, these genes involved in anatomical development, and also the role of hox genes, which are a type of homeobox gene but only found in animals. So here it goes. So apologies to those of you that were here this morning, I missed, but um, I may as well just start from scratch. Looking at those four embryos, it's very difficult to see which ones are human beings. And the reason because of that is because the genes that control your anatomical development are very, very similar across different organisms. So fish, reptile, bird, and human, we all, at this stage, even though there's been a lot of differentiation, we've got, you know, where the head is and where the sort of the arms and legs would come out of and, and where the of tail and gills as well. So, yes, we've got parts that, in like humans, that we don't end up using. That's where apoptosis comes in and removes those parts we don't need. But generally, the body plan, the anatomical development at this stage is very, very, very similar, nearly identical. And the reason because of this is, if this were to go wrong, if you had a mutation in these genes, genes that control where your head goes, you're very unlikely to survive. So a simple point mutation which affects these genes usually ends in the organism, the embryo, not surviving. And therefore, they don't survive, don't get reproduced, don't pass down those mutations to their offspring. We say that these genes are highly conserved. That's a link to module four and classification. You might remember learning about cytochrome C and how its sort of amino biochemical nature is identical in virtually every organism. And you can compare it between different organisms as a way to see how a uh, Basically, when the last time we shared a common ancestor was. Still, I'll get to that bit a bit more later. So how is your body plan decided? Because clearly, you know, if we look at early stage from fish, the amphibian salamander, reptile tortoise, bird chick, and four different uh, mammal-based embryos, you wouldn't know which is which. There's no way on earth you'd know which is which looking at them if it didn't say which one it was. But clearly, as we start to differentiate and more mitosis and apoptosis happens, then we can start to kind of say, oh, yeah, they're going to be the fish. Yep, they're definitely the, the birdie type ones. Um, oh, yeah, they're just weird looking. So maybe that's a human. <laughs> Something along those lines. So what are the genes that do it? The big family of genes that control your anatomical development are called the homeotic genes. So there's loads of them across loads of different chromosomes, and they all are involved in controlling anatomical development. Several of those genes contain what we call homeobox sequences. Sometimes they are known as homeobox genes, but don't call them genes. They're a sequence within a gene. They're part of a gene, not a whole gene by themselves. So let's stick with the term homeobox sequence. Every homeobox sequence, so it's a part of one of these homeotic genes, is about 180, not about, it is 180 bases. So codes for a chain of 60 amino acids. The chain of amino acids also has a key term, called the homeo-domain sequence. So I've kind of just drawn it here. 
So this is my 180 base. I know I've not drawn 180, but that would have been ridiculous. This is my 180 bases, which is called a homeobox sequence. And you'll find that within a homeotic gene. So the homeotic gene will probably have thousands of bases coding for hundreds of amino acids. But within it are just 180 bases, the homeobox sequence, which code for a tiny part of the protein, 60 amino acids long, which is known as the homeodomain sequence. So I've just zoomed in here. Oh, gone too far. So imagine this middle line here is the entire homeo homeotic gene. Within it, and I've done it in red, is the homeobox sequence, 180 bases. And that codes for 60 amino acids called a homeodomain sequence. Now you may have heard me explain. The science of this idea, homeotic genes and what I'm going to get into later, Hox genes, is very poorly understood, not just by students, but by teachers and by the exam board. And therefore, you don't really get many questions about it that really delve into deep knowledge. But they certainly can ask you questions about the relationship between homeotic genes, which is the whole thing, the homeobox sequence, which is 180 base pairs within that gene, and the homeodomain sequence, which is the 60 amino acids coded for by the homeobox sequence. So there's a few key terms in there that I know. I'm hoping that diagram that you can see kind of just demonstrates it a little bit more clearly than the textbook, which is absolutely pants. But obviously I can review that when, when I see you next time face to face. Feel free to pause me and do notes, whatever you want. I'm just going to keep going. The homeodomain sequence. So this is the 60 amino acids, the part of the protein. So this sequence of amino acids can fold into a particular shape. And obviously that shape will be dependent on the rest of the protein and all the different bonds that have uh, formed to make the tertiary structure. The key idea is it will have a specific shape and that shape can bind to DNA, can bind to promoter regions, enhancer regions of the DNA, which regulate the transcription of adjacent genes, i.e. The homeodomain sequence, that part of the protein is binding and therefore acting as a transcription factor. It does have a very specific shape, the homeodomain sequence, so six amino acids. Its shape is what we call a HTH. Two alpha helices, so think of your secondary protein structure, two alpha helices, connected by a little, just a little turn. So helix, turn, helix. H T H. And it will be specific in shape to part of the DNA called an enhancer region. So think of it like a promoter region. And it will be very specific to the sequence of bases, thymine, adenine, adenine, thymine. So the transcription factor, this homeodomain sequence, binds to a TAAT complex thymine, adenine, adenine, thymine, on the enhancer region, think of it like a promoter region, a region that initiates transcription of a gene to be transcribed. So I'm just going to recap everything I've got so far. The entire family of genes that control your body plan, your anatomical development, are the homeotic genes. Within some homeotic genes, there are 180 base pace pairs called a homeobox sequence. 180 bases will code for 60 amino acids in the protein. And those 60 amino acids, the bit in red, is known as the homeodomain se sequence. It will have a specific shape, HTH, alpha helix, turn helix, which will be able to bind to an enhancer region of the DNA, a region that initiates transcription. And by doing so, it is acting as a transcription factor, switching on genes involved in anatomical development. Now, 
The homeobox sequence of a fruit, fruit fly, those 108 base pairs, also exist in mice. And not just do they both exist, the base sequences of those that 180 base sequence was virtually identical between a fly and a mouse. Completely different types of animals. One's a vertebrate, one isn't. They were as far apart, classification-based, phylogeny-based, as animals can be. Yet, the genes were virtually identical. So yes, we say that these homeobox sequences, the 180 base pairs that code for the homeodomain sequence, 60 amino acids acting as a transcription factor, we say they are very highly conserved. They must be crucial for the regulation of organisms' anatomical development and differentiation. If there were a mutation, it will lead to significant abnormalities and usually death. Hence why mutations tend not to be passed down to offspring, because if you have a mutation in your homeobox genes, you tend not to be alive. Now, the second key word was Hox genes. Hox genes are a type of homeobox genes. So Hox genes are an example of those 180 base pairs, but they're only found in animals. Now, the reason why they're only found in animals is because they regulate the development of your anterior to posterior axis within an embryo. So effectively, these genes decide in an embryo which cells go on to be the head, the neck, the torso, the, the abdomen, the legs, the hips. They actually decide where that anterior posterior axis is. So which, you know, I've just got a ball of cells, which ones, where is the top? Which bit is going to be the head? So these genes will decide them. <clears throat> but still, they are Hox genes. They are just a type of homeobox genes. So they are an example of those 180 base pairs, which code for 60 amino acids, a homeodomain sequence. The only thing that makes these guys different, special, is that they are only found in animals, because only animals will you have an embryo that needs an anterior-posterior axis. And if mutated, it will lead to significant abnormalities. So this is an experiment with Drosophilia flies. What they've done is they've very purposefully mutated the Hox gene. And they've changed it so that they've just swapped these genes around so they get switched on at different times. And it meant that legs grew out where their antennas should be instead of antennae. Mutations don't end well. Now, slightly weird bit, this is a bit that no one really understands why or how. Hox genes are found in clusters, and each cluster can contain up to 10 genes. In tetrapods, us, we have four different clusters. You can see that. See, we've got like one, two, three, four of each of the blooms. One, two, three, four of these oranges here. Obviously, urkins, hemichordates, urochordates, cephalochordates, they've only got one cluster, don't they? Teleos fish, bless them, have loads more clusters. Now, what this means, the fact we have clusters, is that over time in evolution, clearly these Hox genes have been duplicated. So now these tetrapods have multiple in each, you know, they've got these different clusters. And it also kind of is true that the more clusters you have, the more advanced an organism you are. Now, I have done my reading, I've done my research, and I have no, literally, no scientific journal has been able to enlighten me, actually, as to why. But it is certainly a truth. Generally speaking, those of us that have had duplications of our Hox genes, it has allowed those organisms to evolve slightly more advanced body parts. Advanced organs. One of those things. <clears throat> and if I show you here, these are all different Hox genes. I know I know they're drawn on the spinal cord. They're not found in the spinal cord. I hope you appreciate this. It's just a drawing to show you which bits go where. So it doesn't matter what the organism is, whether you're a fruit fly or whether you're an embryo of a human, the same Hox genes are found 
same colorations, but maybe they're just slightly different duplications. But we've got all these all these green ones where they've only got one at the end. So highly conserved. But not only that, the red bit codes for the head in both. The orange bit is coding for like the neck base places. There's the blue bits are sort of like the middle of the organism in both because they're high, so highly conserved. It's very important in embryos that these genes get switched on in the right order. For example, if you're developing as an embryo, clearly the, the organ that you want to develop first will be the head and the brain because that's going to control everything else. So it's very important that the red one gets switched on first, then the orange, then the black dotty, then the dark blue, then the light blue, then the grey, then whatever that is, then the yellow, and then all the greens. So this is happening in a sequential order in every organism. It has to follow this step-by-step -step order. So Hox genes are activated and expressed in order along the anterior-posterior axis of the embryo. Anterior, by the way, is obviously the head, the top. Posterior is the bottom, so that's where your legs would go. The order of gene expressions corresponds to the sequential, so that's you know step by step in order, head to tail, but also a temporal development, time order. The fact it does it in time order and space order, sequential and temporal, is a phenomenon, a key word called collinearity. Collinearity. So yeah, the head, you know, the, this this bit, the dark blue bit has to happen first, then the yellow bit, then the blue bit. Yeah, that's got to happen in order. But it's got to happen in the right time order as well, otherwise things might grow too fast and the next bit hasn't grown yet, so oh, how do I support it? Or things might not have grown enough to actually support the next bit. It has to happen in the right time as well as sequential. Collinearity. So here's another example of a study with a fruit fly when they introduce a mutation. Look, it's got another pair of wings growing instead of its a pair of legs not going to be particularly helpful. That one, oh, where's its eye? Where's the eye gone? Like, have they just mutated it so the eye didn't develop? Or have, or has they, have, did they put the eye gene just a bit further on? So is there an eye sticking out of their bum here? Who knows? So this is my key information, because I'm, I'm, I'm at the end now. The homeobox sequence is 180 base pairs within homeotic genes. It is very highly conserved and it codes for the homeodomain sequences, homeodomain proteins. A Hox gene is a homeobox sequence, but only found in animals. It's involved in the anterior to posterior axis. The homeodomain proteins, or we call them homeodomain sequences, they are 60 amino acids within a protein that act as transcription factors to activate or repress genes involved in mitosis, apoptosis, the cell cycle. In other words, activate genes involved in controlling anatomical development. So in terms of homeo homeo homeoboxed sequences, homeodomain sequences, I'm well aware that that is proper nasty. And obviously we'll, I'll spend a bit of time talking about it, reviewing it next time I see you. Final question though, because again, in terms of questions that have ever come up in the past, I've seen a one marker for where are Hox genes found? The animal answer is animals only, but I've seen this as well. Why is fruit flies? Think how easy it is to keep a fruit fly. Like literally to feed them, you just like start the week, just put a bit of sugar solution down in the petri dish at the bottom of their, of their tank where they're living. That's it. Because the life cycle is so, so short, you can get, you know, if you, if you kill a batch of adults, you can just very quickly have new adults made. And because they're so small, you can fit thousands into a teeny tiny space. Oh, that'd be useful. So anyway, that was homeo box sequences. That was controlling of the anatomical development. Thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry about the webinar this morning. Peace out. Bye-bye.